Section thirty seven of the Watergate Report, Volume three. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Final report of the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities. Volume three. Resolutions pertaining to the Select Committee. Ninety third Congress, first session. Senate Resolution sixty. In the Senate of the United States, February five, nineteen seventy three. Mr. Irvin, for himself, and Mr. Mansfield, submitted the following resolution, which was ordered to be placed on the calendar, February 7, 1973, considered, amended, and agreed to, omit the part struck through, and insert the part printed in italic. Resolution To establish a select committee of the Senate to conduct an investigation and study of the extent if any to which illegal improper or unethical activities were engaged in by any persons acting individually or in combination with others in the presidential election of nineteen seventy two or any campaign canvass or other activity related to it resolved section one a that there is hereby established a select committee of the senate which may be called for convenience of expression the select committee on presidential campaign activities to conduct an investigation and study of the extent if any to which illegal improper or unethical activities were engaged in by any persons acting either individually or in combination with others in the presidential election of nineteen seventy two or in any related campaign or canvass conducted by or in behalf of any person seeking nomination or election as the candidate of any political party for the office of president of the united states in such election and to determine whether in its judgment any occurrences which may be revealed by the investigation and study indicate the necessity or desirability of the enactment of new congressional legislation to safeguard the electoral process by which the president of the united states is chosen b the select committee created by this resolution shall consist of seven members of the senate four of whom shall be appointed by the president of the senate from the majority members of the senate upon the recommendation of the majority leader of the senate and three of whom shall be appointed by the president of the senate from the minority members of the senate upon the recommendation of the minority leader of the senate for the purposes of paragraph six of rule twenty five of the standing rules of the senate service of a senator as a member chairman or vice chairman of the select committee should not be taken into account c the select committee shall select a chairman and vice chairman from among its members and adopt rules of procedure to govern its proceedings the vice chairman shall preside over meetings of the select committee during the absence of the chairman and discharge such other responsibilities as may be assigned to him by the select committee or the chairman vacancies in the membership of the select committee shall not affect the authority of the remaining members to execute the functions of the select committee and shall be filled in the same manner as original appointments to it are made d a majority of the members of the select committee shall constitute a quorum for the transaction of business but the select committee may fix a lesser number as a quorum for the purpose of taking testimony or depositions section two that the select committee is authorized and directed to do everything necessary or appropriate to make the investigation and study specified in section one a 
without abridging or limiting in any way the authority conferred upon the select committee by the preceding sentence the senate further expressly authorizes and directs the select committee to make a complete investigation and study of the activities of any and all persons or groups of persons or organizations of any kind which have any tendency to reveal the full facts in respect to the following matters or questions one the breaking entering and bugging of the headquarters or offices of the democratic national committee in the watergate building in washington district of columbia two the monitoring by bugging eavesdropping wiretapping or other surreptitious means of conversations or communications occurring in whole or in part in the headquarters or offices of the democratic national committee in the watergate building in washington district of columbia three whether or not any printed or typed or written document or paper or other material was surreptitiously removed from the headquarters or offices of the democratic national committee in the watergate building in washington district of columbia and thereafter copied or reproduced by photography or any other means for the information of any person or political committee or organization four the preparing transmitting or receiving by any person for himself or any political committee or any organization of any report or information concerning the activities mentioned in subdivision one two or three of this section and the information contained in any such report five whether any persons acting individually or in combination with others plan the activities mentioned in subdivision one two three or four of this section or employed any of the participants in such activities to participate in them or made any payments or promises of payments of money or other things of value to the participants in such activities or their families for their activities or for concealing the truth in respect to them or any of the persons having any connection with them or their activities and if so the source of the monies used in such payments and the identities and motives of the persons planning such activities or employing the participants in them six whether any persons participating in any of the activities mentioned in subdivision one two three four or five of this section have been induced by bribery coercion threats or any other means whatsoever to plead guilty to the charges preferred against them in the district court of the district of columbia or to conceal or fail to reveal any knowledge of any of the activities mentioned in subdivision one two three four or five of this section and if so the identities of the persons inducing them to do such things and the identities of any other persons or any committees or organizations for whom they acted seven any efforts to disrupt hinder impede or sabotage in any way any campaign canvas or activity conducted by or in behalf of any person seeking nomination or election as the candidate of any political party for the office of president of the united states in nineteen seventy two by infiltrating any political committee or organization or headquarters or offices or home or whereabouts of the person seeking such nomination or election or of any person aiding him in so doing or by bugging or eavesdropping or wiretapping the conversations communications plans headquarters offices home or whereabouts of the person seeking such nomination or election or of any other person assisting him in so doing or by exercising surveillance over the person seeking such nomination or election or of any person assisting him in so doing or by reporting to any other person or to any political committee or organization any information obtained by such infiltration eavesdropping bugging wiretapping or surveillance eight whether any person acting individually or in combination with others or political committee 
or organization induced any of the activities mentioned in subdivision seven of this section or paid any of the participants in any such activities for their services and if so the identities of such persons or committee or organization and the source of the funds used by them to procure or finance such activities nine any fabrication dissemination or publication of any false charges or other false information having the purpose of discrediting any person seeking nomination or election as the candidate of any political party to the office of president of the united states in nineteen seventy two ten the planning of any of the activities mentioned in subdivision seven eight or nine of this section the employing of the participants in such activities and the source of any monies or things of value which may have been given or promised to the participants in such activities for their services and the identities of any persons or committees or organizations which may have been involved in any way in the planning procuring and financing of such activities eleven any transactions or circumstances relating to the source the control the transmission the transfer the deposit the storage the concealment the expenditure or use in the united states or in any other country of any monies or other things of value collected or received for actual or pretended use in the presidential election of nineteen seventy two or in any related campaign or canvass or activities preceding or accompanying such election by any person group of persons committee or organization of any kind acting or professing to act in behalf of any national political party or in support of or in opposition to any person seeking nomination or election to the office of president of the united states in nineteen seventy two twelve compliance or non-compliance with any act of congress requiring the reporting of the receipt or disbursement or use of any monies or other things of value mentioned in subdivision eleven of this section thirteen whether any of the monies or things of value mentioned in subdivision eleven of this section were placed in any secret fund or place of storage for use in financing any activity which was sought to be concealed from the public and if so what disbursement or expenditure was made of such secret fund and the identities of any person or group of persons or committee or organization having any control over such secret fund or the disbursement or expenditure of the same fourteen whether any books checks cancelled checks communications correspondence documents papers physical evidence records recordings tapes or materials relating to any of the matters or questions the select committee is authorized and directed to investigate and study have been concealed suppressed or destroyed by any persons acting individually or in combination with others and if so the identities and motives of any such persons or groups of persons fifteen any other activities circumstances materials or transactions having a tendency to prove or disprove that persons acting either individually or in combination with others engaged in any illegal improper or unethical activities in connection with the presidential election of nineteen seventy two or any campaign canvass or activity related to such election sixteen whether any of the existing laws of the united states are inadequate either in their provisions or manner of enforcement to safeguard the integrity or purity of the process by which presidents are chosen section three a to enable a select committee to make the investigation and study authorized and directed by this resolution the senate hereby empowers the select committee as an agency of the senate one to employ and fix the compensation of such clerical investigatory legal technical and other assistance as it deems necessary or appropriate two to sit and act at any time or place during sessions recesses 
and adjournment periods of the senate three to hold hearings for taking testimony on oath or to receive documentary or physical evidence relating to the matters and questions it is authorized to investigate or study four to require by subpoena or otherwise the attendance as witnesses of any persons who the select committee believes have knowledge or information concerning any of the matters or questions it is authorized to investigate and study five to require by subpoena or order any department agency officer or employee of the executive branch of the united states government or any private person firm or corporation or any officer or former officer or employee of any political committee or organization to produce for its consideration or for use as evidence in its investigation and study any books checks cancelled checks correspondence communications document papers physical evidence records recordings tapes or materials relating to any of the matters or questions it is authorized to investigate and study which they or any of them may have in their custody or under their control six to make to the senate any recommendations it deems appropriate in respect to the willful failure or refusal of any person to appear before it in obedience to a subpoena or order or in respect to the willful failure or refusal of any person to answer questions or give testimony in his character as a witness during his appearance before it or in respect to the willful failure or refusal of any officer or employee of the executive branch of the united states government or any person firm or corporation or any officer or former officer or employee of any political committee or organization to produce before the committee any books checks cancel checks correspondence communications document financial records papers physical evidence records recordings tapes or materials in obedience to any subpoena or order seven to take depositions and other testimony on oath anywhere within the united states or in any other country eight to procure the temporary or intermittent services of individual consultants or organizations thereof in the same manner and under the same conditions as the standing committee of the senate may procure such services under section two o two i of the legislative reorganization act of nineteen forty six nine to use on a reimbursable basis with the prior consent of the government department or agency concerned and the committee on rules and administration the services of personnel of any such department or agency ten to use on a reimbursable basis or otherwise with the prior consent of the chairman of any other of the senate committees or the chairman of any subcommittee of any committee of the staffs of such other senate committees or any subcommittees of such other senate committees whenever the select committee or its chairman deems that such action is necessary or appropriate to enable the select committee to make the investigation and study authorized and directed by this resolution eleven to have access through the agency of any member of the select committee chief majority council minority council or any of its investigatory assistants jointly designated by the chairman and the ranking minority member to any data evidence information report analysis or document or papers relating to any of the matters or questions which it is authorized and directed to investigate and study in the custody or under the control of any department agency officer or employee of the executive branch of the united states government having the power under the laws of the united states to investigate any alleged criminal activities or to prosecute persons charged with crimes against the united states which will aid the select committee to prepare for or conduct the investigation and study authorized and directed by this resolution and twelve to expand to the extent it determines necessary or appropriate any monies made available to it by the senate to perform the duties and exercise the powers conferred upon it 
by this resolution and to make the investigation and study it is authorized by this resolution to make b subpoenas may be issued by the select committee acting to the chairman or any other member designated by him and may be served by any person designated by such chairman or other member anywhere within the borders of the united states the chairman of the select committee or any other member thereof is hereby authorized to administer oaths to any witnesses appearing before the committee c in preparing for or conducting the investigation and study authorized and directed by this resolution the select committee shall be empowered to exercise the powers conferred upon committees of the senate by section six zero zero two of title eighteen of the united states code or any other act of congress regulating the granting of immunity to witnesses section four the select committee shall have authority to recommend the enactment of any new congressional legislation which its investigation considers it is necessary or desirable to safeguard the electoral process by which the president of the united states is chosen section five the select committee shall make a final report of the results of the investigation and study conducted by it pursuant to this resolution together with its findings and its recommendations as to new congressional legislation it deems necessary or desirable to the senate at the earliest practicable date but no later than february twenty eighth nineteen seventy four the select committee may also submit to the senate such interim reports as it considers appropriate after submission of its final report the select committee shall have three calendar months to close its affairs and on the expiration of such three calendar months shall cease to exist section six the expenses of the select committee through february twenty eighth nineteen seventy four under this resolution shall not exceed five hundred thousand dollars of which amount not to exceed twenty five thousand dollars shall be available for the procurement of the services of individual consultants or organizations thereof such expenses shall be paid from the contingent fund of the senate upon vouchers approved by the chairman of the select committee the minority members of the select committee shall have one-third of the professional staff of the select committee including a minority council and such part of the clerical staff as may be adequate ninety-third congress first session senate resolution one nine four in the senate of the united states november second nineteen seventy three mr irvin for himself mr baker mr gurney mr inouette mr montoya mr talmage and mr weicker submitted the following resolution which was ordered to be placed on the calendar november seventh nineteen seventy three considered and agreed to resolution relating to senate resolution sixty resolved that section one by senate resolution sixty ninety third congress first session nineteen seventy three section three a five the select committee on presidential campaign activities was and is empowered to issue subpoenas for documents tapes and other material to any officer of the executive branch of the united states government in view of the fact that the president of the united states is as recognized by senate resolution sixty an officer of the united states and was a candidate for the office of president in nineteen seventy two and is therefore a person whose activities the select committee is authorized by senate resolution sixty to investigate it is the sense of the senate that the select committee's issuance on july twenty third nineteen seventy three of two subpoenas deuces taken to the president for the production of tapes and other materials was and is fully authorized by senate resolution sixty moreover the senate hereby approves and ratifies the committee's issuance of those subpoenas section two on august ninth nineteen seventy three the select committee and its members instituted suit against the president of the united states in the united states district court for the district of columbia 
to achieve compliance with the two subpoenas referenced in section one above and since that time in both the district court and the united states court of appeals for the district of columbia circuit have actively pursued this litigation it is the sense of the senate that the initiation and pursuit of this litigation by the select committee and its members was and is fully authorized by applicable custom and law including the provisions of senate resolution two six two seventieth congress first session nineteen twenty eight in view of the entirely discretionary provisions of sections three a six of senate resolution sixty it is further the sense of the senate that the initiation of the lawsuit did not require the prior approval of the senate moreover the senate hereby approves and ratifies the actions of the select committee in instituting and pursuing the aforesaid litigation section three the select committee and its members by issuing subpoenas to the president and in instituting and pursuing litigation to achieve compliance with those subpoenas were and are acting to determine the extent of possible illegal improper or unethical conduct in connection with the presidential campaign and election of nineteen seventy two by officers or employees of the executive branch of the united states government or other persons it is the sense of the senate that in so doing the select committee and its members were and are engaged in the furtherance of valid legislative purposes to wit a determination of the need for and scope of corrective legislation to safeguard the processes by which the president of the united states is elected and in that connection the informing of the public of the extent of illegal improper or unethical activities that occurred in connection with the presidential campaign and election of nineteen seventy two and the involvement of officers or employees of the executive branch or others therein it is further the sense of the senate that the materials sought by the committee's subpoenas are of vital importance in determining the extent of such involvement and in determining the need for and scope of corrective legislation ninety-third congress first session senate resolution one three two in the senate of the united states june twenty five nineteen seventy three mr irvin for himself and mr baker submitted the following resolution which was considered and agreed to resolution to increase the sums allotted to the senate select committee on presidential campaign activities for the expenses of conducting the investigation and study authorized and directed by senate resolution sixty which was adopted on february seventh nineteen seventy three resolved section one that the first sentence of section six of senate resolution sixty which was adopted on february seventh nineteen seventy three is hereby changed to read as follows the expenses of the select committee through february twenty eighth nineteen seventy four under this resolution shall not exceed one million dollars of which amount not to exceed forty thousand dollars shall be available for the procurement of the services of individual consultants or organizations thereof ninety-third congress second session senate resolution three two seven in the senate of the united states may twentieth nineteen seventy four mr irvin for himself and mr baker submitted the following resolution which was ordered to be placed on the calendar may twenty one nineteen seventy four considered and agreed to resolution to extend the time of the senate select committee on presidential campaign activities for making its final report to the senate and for prosecuting its judicial action against the president for certain taped recordings resolved that section five of senate resolution sixty which was adopted february seventh nineteen seventy three is hereby amended to read as follows the select committee shall make a final report of the results of the investigation and study conducted by it pursuant to this resolution together with its findings and such legislative proposals as it deems necessary or desirable to the senate at the earliest practical date but no later than june thirtieth nineteen seventy four the select committee may also submit 
to the senate such interim reports as it considers appropriate after submission of its final report the select committee shall have three calendar months to close its affairs and on the expiration of such three calendar months shall cease to exist provided however that in case the judicial action brought by the select committee against the president to obtain specified taped recordings of conversations in which the president and his former aide john w dean participated is not fully adjudicated before the expiration of such three calendar months the select committee shall continue in existence thereafter until thirty days subsequent to the occurrence of one of these alternative events namely the judicial action is finally adjudicated adversely to the select committee or the specified taped recordings are actually received by the select committee pursuant to the final adjudication of such judicial action or otherwise in case the last event occurs the select committee is empowered to report to the senate an addendum to its final report setting forth findings and legislative recommendations based on what the taped recordings disclose end of section thirty seven recording by greg giordano newport ritchie florida end of final report of the senate select committee on presidential campaign activities volume three